Good morning and welcome to the special presentation on future of AI and robotics. Today, we have a special guest, Mr. Amit Raman, co-founder and chief executive officer of Inca Robotics Thrissur, a leading innovators in robotics and AI, also having years of experience in technology development and has been in forefront in creating solutions to bridge the gap between cutting-edge robotics and practical applications in our daily life. Also, we have Arundhati B of grade 11, who is eagerly waiting to know more about robotics. Welcome, Arundhati. How will you explain artificial intelligence and robotics to the parents who aren't technical expert? And secondly, what is the key difference between artificial intelligence, machine learning and robotics, sir? Thank you, Reshmi, ma'am. Uh, it's happy and a an honor to be here with you today. Uh, artificial intelligence, robotics, these are buzzwords that everybody nowadays keeps talking about. So if, if you ask me in terms of artificial intelligence, you know, a, a machine think on its own and takes decisions on its own. And if you look at robotics, it's what does things, it's action. Machine learning, it's where it learned from the data or the experience that it has gathered over a period of time. So if you look at Netflix or YouTube, you will see a lot of these things, uh, pictures or video that is pop coming up in terms of our feed, where it is based on the information that we have already looked into. How rapidly is this technology evolving? And what are the major advancements you anticipate in the next five to 10 years? Thanks, Arunadi. Uh, it's a very interesting question because we'll have to look at it in two dimensions. One is the evolution of technology as well as the adoption of technology. So if you look at the evolution of technology, we have seen that, you know, the last disruptive innovation that happened was in artificial intelligence with ChatGPT coming in. It took around three weeks to reach a one million users base. Yeah, but if you look 10 years back when YouTube came in, it took around seven years. Okay, so we see a lot of Changes is going to happen soon as well. You see now, DeepSeek has come in. The cost is only a parameter, one of the parameters that is very less. So adoption increases. There are a lot of new jobs will be created because of these technological changes. We see that this is going to impact a lot of industries as well. A creative writing was an industry we thought that it could never be touched. It has gone into an extreme that every industry is going to have an impact because of the changes in AI. Okay, you see, you have tools like uh, Suno, which is an AI tool uh, that is that can generate music. So there's a lot of innovative tool that is coming in. You can create presentations in seconds. Yeah, you could create videos in seconds. So what is going to uh, trigger is the imagination of people. So this is where technology is changing. So new jobs will be created. I'll just give you a few examples here. Yeah, if 10 years ago, if I went and told, uh, you know, my parents that I wanted to be a YouTube creator. Yeah, nobody will agree to it because that's, people not see that as a profession. People thought that it could not make money out of it. But you will see that it is changing. And new, new things will come in. Like you have these social media influencers, you have, you know, these uh, kind of uh, robotic operators or robotic administrators that is coming. And you will see, uh, you know, what is happening in the industry is also that because AI has come in, yeah, uh, Anthropic CEO was uh, mentioning it last week that he said that in six months time, 90% of the code will be written by AI. Okay, and in a year, it will be 100%. So that is how technology is going to change. Sir, how can we bridge the knowledge gap between what is happening in the school and what is happening in the industry? Uh, that's really a great question, ma'am. So, because we, we always see that this the, the bridge is there between what the industry wants and what the academy is offering. Yeah, so I think uh, we can reduce the gap. Yeah, we cannot completely close it because the way the industry is moving is at a very fast pace and where the academia is is moving is a bit slower than usual. Yeah, but you're seeing that, that space is increasing and it takes time and this is where people have to be creative the students have to be creative they, they have to ensure that any job that they have to go into they are able to have complex problem solving skills as one of their major weights 
So this is where I think schools can take a leap somewhere and see how it can go into hands-on learning, stay in them there, build a lot of critical thinking skills because that is the other skill that is also required. How do you challenge the status quo and build something better? Because uh, once these kind of AI and robotics and other technologies come in, we can also ensure that we are able to improve the productivity of people. Okay, so people have to think along the way. And this is not only for robotic students or people who are interested in technology. Be it any profession that you're going into, be it a doctor, a chef, a lawyer, a banker, a teacher, you know, they, they have to develop these kind of skills to ensure that they're ready for the jobs of the future or the existing jobs where it transforms into jobs of the future. That adaptability skills needs to be increased to a certain level, which can be done. Yeah, and this, there's a lot of things that the schools are doing to make this happen as well. But it is a slow thing because you're trying to change the value or the behavior of the child. And why is that? Is because kids only spend six to eight hours in school. Yeah, the remaining 16 hours is spent at home or outside. So that kind of experience that where 16 hours, you know, you take out the eight hours of sleep that the kid wants. Then the remaining eight hours is where he's spending with his parents, a lot of value systems that they are building over a period of time and as well as how much experience that the kids can be exposed to during that period of time is really important for them to evolve into that figure it out yourself kind of a, 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 a mentality. Once that mindset is there, then they will be very curious to understand. And once the curiosity is triggered, then they can do wonders. Because that's where, you know, people try to solve the problems and ensure that as well as telling complex problem solves, solving is enabled to there, it's activated in their brain. And then that will take them to the next level. So this is what I believe that we have to do and it has to be cultivated at home, embraced and ensure that it is nurtured in the school before it can be taken at, into an industrial level. And that's where I was, uh, I was always say, you know, we need to ensure that we expose them to a lot of inter-school competitions, uh, hackathons, comp uh, other uh, activities, you know, where a lot of learning by seeing as well as learning by doing happens. Learning by seeing is basically taking them outside into different experiences, how people in the same age are being, you know, uh, uh, doing different things. Uh, these kind of experiences gives them a lot of understanding. Okay, this is not only, you know, them, but I also can be able to do this. Uh, and once they have that kind of a ignite a spark, you will not see it very, very soon. The next day, you will not see them doing certain things. But over a period of two to three years, you will see them evolving into that once the environment is right.